I'm Brian from Solid State Logic, and you're watching GearWire.com. Today, I'll be introducing ProConvert, our DAW project conversion tool. Uh, Solid State Logic has recently announced ProConvert 5, and this is our DAW project conversion tool. What it allows you to do is uh, take up to 40 different applications and translate all the points in the edit timeline from one project uh, easily into another project to allow for all your edit points, all your fades and markers, and uh, many other items to be translated into your new application. Um, so I'm going to go back up to the file menu, and what I want to do is open a project. And what I'm doing here is opening the project that I want to translate from, which, uh, as we saw before, was the Pro Tools session that I had. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the actual session icon and open that up, and I'm going to be immediately met with the ProConvert project window. And within the project window, you can see here already that ProConvert knows that I have a Pro Tools session that I want to convert. Um, it gives me the title of the session as well as the clip information that I have, how many original source files there are, how many tracks were in the session, which were five. I have all the uh, sample rate, bit depth, frame rate information. And as I mentioned before, it does know that I have automation within the session. I did not translate any markers, and I'll show you a feature of that later within the ProConvert process. Uh, I did not have any PQ data. And then I also have start, end, and total time of the session, any offset information. And then here you can see that it gives me the project size uh, of the whole folder. Uh, within ProConvert, on the left-hand side here, we have um, a majority of the applications available um, I have put into a favorites folder. And ProConvert can translate uh, between uh, uh, over 40 different applications. Uh, and I have them put into a favorites folder here on the left-hand side so I have easy access to them. Uh, the next window here on the right-hand side is the track view. And you can see here that this mimics um, the session that I came from and lists my tracks in order. On the right-hand side of the track view is our audio file uh, in clip view. And you can see here that it shows all the clips that I had with my drum edits as well as my bass track and my guitar tracks down below. Uh, one thing you'll notice here below, it, per audio clip and track, I have information. You can see here on my combo bass track, as I showed you before, I have a fade on the input of the audio file. And that fade is being read by ProConvert and gives me all the fade information here. It tells me uh, if this clip was locked uh, or muted within the session, which it was not, and gives me all the destination information. So now that everything in my window is set up, I'm just going to go ahead and start the conversion process. And easy enough, I'm just going to go ahead up here to the top header and hit Convert. And here is where I'll select the application that I want to convert to. Uh, in this case, it's going to be Steinberg Nuendo 4.0. I'm just going to go ahead and select that here. And I'm met with my first window that shows that I'm converting from Pro Tools to Steinberg. And within this window, I have options to rename the project should I choose to. I also have sample rate and frame rate and bit depth information here that's also been previously chosen. Uh, on the bottom left, I have offset information uh, should that have been within the session. And then I also have a choice here to ignore empty tracks, that if I had a bunch of empty tracks uh, that I did not want to import into the new session, I can choose here to disregard those. Or another feature, I can remove overlaps from the audio files within the session should I choose to. Uh, with that, being left at default, I'm going to go ahead and hit next and go into the next window. And what we have here are the fade, pan, and level information. Uh, by default, it's set to translate fades, which essentially is doing a one-to-one -one translation of the fade from the host application to the designated application. Uh, I can also choose to ignore fades. If you're going from a session and you just perhaps did a score uh, for a post spot for music or a commercial, and you want to get rid of the fades off the files so the guy who's mixing on the console uh, can do his own fades and automation, you can actually remove those and allow him to, to work that way. And then there's also a choice here to edit fades as well. Uh, here I can actually go in and uh, within the bass track I had a linear fade and I can choose uh, many different options to go to a logarithmic fade should I choose to, as well as I have different timing options. Um, and for instance, uh, if I was doing film and I needed to change my fade type but keep my fade time to match an actual video clip, I can choose to keep my fade time here and that option is no longer available to change the time. So by default, I'm going to just translate the fade one to one, so I'm going to engage that feature. And down below here, what we have is the envelopes and levels features. Um, the first selection that we have is translate volume curves, and this allows me to translate the volume curve one for one uh, between applications. Uh, different applications, as you know, have 
uh, different code that's written in that uh, they have different reference points in how the automation is done and how the panning is done. And this allows for that selection to be, to be read properly from the uh, source application to the designation application. As well as perhaps if you're doing this conversion along with video, you may want to change the fade time. Uh, I also have a choice here below to rescale the uh, volume information. Should I notice there's perhaps a, a 3 dB difference between applications and translation, I can change that here. Um, it's plus and minus 12 dB. Um, in this particular instance, I don't need to rescale the uh, automation volume, so I'm going to go ahead and deselect that. Below, I have translate pan curves. Uh, by default, this is active, which I, I want to keep because I want to make sure that my panning information is kept as true as possible between both applications. Uh, and again, all this is just a choice selection for you. The real hard work is being done behind the scenes. Um, and down below here, I have a selection for rescale, which essentially allows me to uh, normalize the audio files. Uh, I don't want to do that in this instance, so I'm going to go ahead and deselect that. On the right-hand side here, you can see markers. And as I mentioned before, I did not bring any markers into this session. Um, should I have brought them in, I can choose here to deselect those. Um, I can use them or not, which is a, a great feature. Um, and then down below here, I also have the option to use PQ data, which I did not import as well. I'm just going to go ahead and hit Next. And we're met with the search audio file window. Uh, and this will allow me to search audio files that are in the project that I want to convert. Uh, and I can search amongst uh, different drives or within a network should I choose to. Um, and just to allow that I have all the file information that I need for the next process, which is uh, the copy audio window.